Welcome to Your Success Podcast. We give you actionable insight and stories behind real life success wherever you go. Here are your hosts, Angelos and Mo. The following episode is our chat with Kevin Whelan from Wealth Builders, who we chatted to about utilizing your SaaS pension for property development. Enjoy. So today, our special guest is Kevin Whelan, who's going to be talking about SaaS pension deployment. Um, so first things first, Kevin, SAS, SAS, SBS, BBC, ABC, Upper GI Joe, what the hell does a SAS even mean? Well, you know, the interesting thing about the way you describe that in the sort of friendly way you've just done is to indicate that whatever you're trying to be successful, you have to learn the language of success. Mm. So there's lots of language that people use when it comes to being financially successful, ROIs and things like this. But of course, one of the big uh, I suppose, acronyms that we're using in the pension world, I call it a director's pension. It's a pension scheme that just strips off all the crap from old pensions where you're told what to do, you've got no access, you've got no control, and it just gives you all of that control back. But in true pensions world, there's no sexy language. You know, There's no marketing term that says, what should we call this pension that gives people all the control they want now and forever because you can pass it on as a legacy? Oh, I tell you what, let's call it a small self-administered scheme. <laughs> you know, it's not the SAS, it's nothing like that. Yeah, it yeah. just says, if you're a director of your own company, you're uniquely positioned in the world in HMRC to be able to have permission to take control of the money that somebody else has got control of, and then you can do with that what the hell you like. And I think that's a pretty smart move. Yeah, that's awesome. Definitely. I would rather it was functional than it was named in a sexy way, I guess. You want to be able to use it, don't you? That's the point of it. Um, yeah, I suppose, you know, we're here today in Brooklands and you yep. see all the names of the fancy cars and yep. AMG. And well, I don't know what AMG means. I just know it's a fast car. Yeah. yeah. So in a high performance vehicle world, a SAS is genuinely yeah. the highest performance yeah. pension. I like that. SAS control and AMG. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, SAS is the that. AMG yeah, of the yeah. investment world. Yeah, I like that. So, I don't mind that association. So yeah. how do you deploy a s- small self-administered scheme? Well, it's, the answer to that, de- what does deployment mean? It means how do you use it? Yeah. Well, the key thing is, you think about any old pension that people have got, I call it the frozen and forgotten. <laughs> you know, people who've built up pensions when they were at work, yeah. They built up pensions privately, but then they kind of get left on the shelf and they get filed away and people just stop thinking about them and almost do not disturb till 65. <laughs> but in fact, if you are capable of being an entrepreneur, whether it's in property, whether it's in business, whether it's in joint venturing, whether it's lending, whatever you want to do and you're capable, that's how you deploy it. So if you're good at something, deploy it doing that. If you're not good at something, don't. Yeah. Quite okay. simple, really. Yeah. Okay. Go so ahead. we mentioned very quickly about pensions, and this is maybe the AMG of pensions, right? Fast, high-performance pension. Go with that. Um, you've alluded to some of the benefits, but what are the key benefits of using a SAS compared to a normal pension, shall we say? Okay. So the first one is, you know, a, a pension scheme is always in a box owned by somebody else. You can tell it because the logo is on the letterhead when you get a statement. The logo is now you, so it's your company, which means you get to make all the decisions. But what are the key ones? Well, first of all, you want it to grow, so you decide what you want to invest in. And today, we just happen to be the Property Developers Conference, right? So they want to deploy that money in property. And as you heard, many of those property experts are getting 20 25% of their money. Well, if you could do that, as opposed to leaving it on the stock market, which goes up and down and round, but always comes back to the same thing, you know, that's a big issue. So property people, perfectly. Deploy in property, they can do what they want. The other thing is you can collaborate. So you know, two people can get together, three people can get together, five people can get together. So you're getting leverage from each other. So it's a real collaborator. I think one of the big ones for older people, uh, people like me, say, is how do you make sure that the money transfers to the next generation without any form of devaluation and then on to the next generation and on to the next generation. So a SAS is a trust fund for a family, and you can have husband, wife, I've got my daughter in there as well, and it essentially means you're creating a trust fund, which you can have a million pound each tax-free, pretty high-performance stuff, and you've got, so therefore in my case, 
three million quid tax free before you do anything, before the taxman is, is really interested. All the benefit is income tax free, capital gains tax free, inheritance tax free, and corporation tax free. In my opinion, it's pretty good stuff. So you got legacy, yeah, control, control, better returns, yeah, collaboration. Only better returns if you're doing it. Yeah, mm. you don't, yeah. you can't park it with somebody else yeah, and go yeah. get me better returns. But yeah, you're doing potentially you, you've nailed better it. returns. You've, yeah, you know, you've got it spot on. And do, do you think? Uh, do you think there'll be any change to the tax position in the budget or in future budgets where they'll actually change how they treat the SAS if a lot of people are piling in and and, uh, and, and making some good money using it? Or? Well, not really. If you think about what's the purpose of HMRC yep. giving permission because the SAS has to be approved. You can't buy one off the shelf. Yep. You, you're approved for it. So that approval is part of the process. And what they're looking for is just are people taking the responsibility as seriously as they are their business. Yeah. So if they file returns, if they do good things, then there's no issue with that. I suppose there's always the, the, the actual the amount of money in, in pensions is going to be even more with the auto enrolment now. There's, everyone's going to have to have a pension, so that will mean in the future there'll be more money for, for to be to be used in SASs. Is that right? Well, you know, I suppose most people don't ever get to SAS in yeah. the same way as they don't get to buy an AMG. Yeah. <laughs> because what they what they tend to do is go with whatever's offered in front right. of them, yeah. and that's usually their employer. Mm. Or some advisor whose advisor's got a vested interest in staying, keeping you where you belong yeah. so that they can stick a siphon in your life and earn money from you. Whereas a SAS, the only person in control is you. Yeah. I like that analogy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> stick a siphon in. <laughs> That's why Brilliant. It's, it's true, though, isn't it? it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I have a joke with people who say, look, you know, if you were doing a joint venture, mm. how would you like this one? Right, here's the deal. Would you sign up to this? I'm going to give you 6%, but keep two of it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take a third of your profit. I'm going to put none of my own money in. I'm going to take zero risk. And if I cock it up, you can't hold me accountable. <laughs> sign here. <laughs> Where do and I well, sign? That's kind yeah. of what happens, you know, yeah, yeah. in yeah. fund managers yeah. and IFAs. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that I'm saying everybody's bad, but, but the principle you have to is watch people out. just, yep. I was supposed to get lazy yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and sleepwalk their way. Okay. So, so it's, are, are it's there... the biggest source of retirement Wealth in the UK is yeah. two point five trillion pounds wow, of, money. of money. You know, so even though you know we can have a joke about pensions, yeah. and it's a bit dull, but in reality, it's a lot of money. one of the easiest yeah. ways to dramatically turn that around, so you can be in control and build. And are there more wealth are there any future. drawbacks of it? We talked about the advantages. Yeah, the drawback is I suppose the primary drawback is you have to be the sort of person willing to take control. Yeah. So if you're lazy, if you're not entrepreneurial. If you want to do everything, you know, either deck chair or armchair, mm. that is not going to work. So we seek out people who have demonstrated by active participation. So again, here, property, you know, they're here paying money to attend a property venue. Yeah. Okay. Chances are they want that money in property. So they'll be perfect. Yeah. If you've you know, got somebody who's just been a teacher for all their life and, and, and left school, uh, not left school, but left the, you know yep. working in school, and they've never done anything before. SAS is not going to be right for them. Okay. So. so, how does one get started with a SAS? Is there a minimum amount of money that you need to have? You mentioned about an application process. How does it work very quickly from a a startup point of view? Well, the easiest way to you first of all you have to apply to HMRC, and there's a process for doing that, uh, having a company and so on. But you can start it in any one of three ways. Either you've got some old money, like we talked about, the frozen and forgotten, and you bring that in. If you don't have any of that, what if you've got a business making good profit and you want to shelter some of that profit and build some wealth independently in a trust fund outside of your business? You could do that. Or if you've got something else in your life that you are paying tax on, like, I don't know, like a piece of property, for example, you could park it inside the pension and get tax relief on it as a, as a special one-off contribution. So many ways to get the money in, and it's tax-free forever after that. So Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So... This podcast is all about success, yeah. and we ask every person on the podcast, what does success mean to you? So what does success mean to you, Ken? Well, to me, it means sharing, to be honest. Um, you know, so I've been fortunate enough to create my own wealth in different ways and written a book about how to do that. But the key thing for me is I love the sharing. I love the spark of recognition of an idea, and I just love the way you picked up on the summary there, and you're having a joke with it because you're, you're getting it, aren't you? And that's that's a real pleasure for me. So that's a successful day for me. Yeah. Cool. That's Fantastic. awesome, man. Fantastic. So you mentioned you've got a book. Um, so if yeah. people want to find out more about the book or about the other businesses that you run, how do people get in contact with you? Easy peasy. Yeah. Wealthbuilders.co.uk. Brilliant. Does what it says Fantastic. on the tin. Fantastic. And the name of your book? 
Oh, that's a very complicated one, but don't worry about that one. Uh, okay. <laughs> they could get it free on, on, online. Okay. It's, oh, it's okay. the seven ways to build wealth. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, cool. okay. Well, thank you so much for your time, Kevin. You're um, and yeah, we'll speak to you again soon. Thank Look you. Look forward to hearing more. Thank Bye-bye. you, Kevin. You have been listening to Your Success Podcast. Click subscribe for more incredible content. More details can be found at www.yoursuccesspodcast.com.